there are circumstances that pop up beyond the control, certainly of the exporter that affect payment in a negative way. And, you know, as a business owner and an exporter, obviously you do everything you can to uh, mitigate the risks associated with your immediate business, right? I mean, you insure your building, you insure your products, you, you take all of these, uh, these things. But now if you're exporting on open payment terms and you're not insuring them, well, now you're also accepting all of those business uh, responsibilities of your buyer, multiple buyers. That's a huge burden. And yeah. there are tools like a credit insurance uh, policy that can absolutely mitigate those risks. And I encourage everybody to, uh, to really look into it. Here's what I've been able to confirm is, I believe largely in supply chain, organizations are still doing what they've largely still always done. And you've said it, companies don't know what they don't know. The market right now is extremely tight. I mean, as, as we all know, the, there's a driver shortage out there and it's even yeah. worse when, you, when you're looking at things like uh, specialized transportation, like tank trucks. I mean, they, they've got to have more qualifications than somebody that just drives a van. So it's been difficult. Um, I have been onboarding my customers very slowly right? Because uh, there's just so much capacity out there. So I'm spending time right now kind of building the relationships with the customers, finding out, all right, where are your hot spots? Where are your trouble spots? And then slowly but surely bringing them into the fold over there. Exactly right. Yes. And and honestly, um, carriers have got, LTL carriers have gotten so much better at this and in, in developing a level of trust within um, their customer base. But um, they o over the years, um, the increases have been arbitrary and, and, and there's been this mistrust between the carriers and the shippers. And I'm a big advocate of, of shippers and carriers working together. They need each other. Um, so there needs to be that, uh, that honesty there and that trust. And, and yes, um, carriers have become much better about one GRI per year, not a GRI every nine or 10 months, um, which would in essence mean two GRIs in one year. Great job on that then. Um, substantially transformed. Um, sounds like a bit of a gray area, really. Uh, and it's subjective, right? Or do they have clear guidelines? Ah, good question. Um, it does sound gray initially, but um, I, I, I think if you, if, if uh, it's hard, how do I say this? Um, substantially transformed if you have lumber from one country that's shipped to country B, lumber from country A shipped to country B, and it's made into furniture in country B, from lumber to furniture is a substantial transformation because it, that. It, it, it wasn't a chair back in country A, but it becomes yeah. a chair in country, country B. And then the, that chair is shipped to country C and is painted, it's still a chair. Mm -hmm. So the painting does not substantially transform it. I was a germaphobe before this happened. So I had hand, hand uh, sanitation stations at every level, at every door. <laughs> what I'm actually picturing is you sitting there wearing your Iron Man mask. <laughs> I, so I how you said that? Oh, no. Because you said that, I just, I did. Oh, have... look at that. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That's almost scripted. <laughs> now I'm looking around there and see what I might have. I don't think I've got anything. Oh, my carrier bag. That's yeah. about it. Oh, wow. And, and that's also failure to deliver the message and be there for them. And that's where a lot of people at least in my experience, struggle with sales is they're great when things are going great. And I'm sure we all know people that are, they are on, when, when things are going well, they're on cloud nine, yeah. nothing can phase them. But as soon as a little bit of adversity hits, they fall apart, they crumble, they lock themselves in the office and they're not coming out and they're just hoping these problems work themselves out. But my market share has always grown with my customers when things have fallen apart. So that's, so yes, yeah, so if, if, it, if it's done right, then, um, that's you know that's that's down that's been down to me if it's not done right it's down to me as well 
So um, that's, that's, that's the challenge there. Um, the main thing, and this is where we started this whole conversation with, which is building a great network and yeah. um, understanding that you don't know everything, which means, you know, building this great network with great individuals and companies and that can help you, um, you know, push, push the boundaries and um, excel. So the same thing here with the US, um, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of individuals and companies that we are looking forward to uh, working alongside with um, to, to get the name out further and further. Um, and I think that's, that's important. Um, if I would have done it completely by myself, that wouldn't have happened. About 80% of our work in the US is war, it's both with the Mexican importer, exporter, yep. or the... U.S. importer, right? So some of them we only work on the U.S. side, some of them only on the Mexican side, but most of all, we have uh, the complete service for them. For me, it's going into the to the office and first of all checking on my shipments, seeing if everything's going smooth. Once and and report that back to my clients, check in with the carriers, make sure they're happy, they got some good rest, they don't need anything, and from there I'll do some sales calls. I'll try to find more people that needs help. And typically throughout the day, I'm answering quotes, figuring out what people need, what budgets they have, or where they need things to go to. And my job is ultimately to arrange it the best way possible and to save them money. We want to be healthier. We sit in our trucks all day long. We want to also talk to people. We sit in our trucks all day long. We don't talk to anybody and it gets boring. Sometimes we'll get close to a driver and do the old school CB radio. But after that, what do you do? You're just sitting there all day long by yourself. So we're trying to create different ways that we can really help the driver and help their lifestyles. We're trying to create a lifestyle opportunity. So that's what the MasterCard is for. Um, but again, we haven't launched it yet and we're still working on it because we want to, we really want to create the ultimate experience. This would be our, I wouldn't say our final product, but it would definitely be one of the best products that we would ever put in the market. And it's going yeah. to change Nobody's doing that right now. I know for me, I, I didn't want to wait another day and I, I wanted to um, stick my nose in there. And if it was going to be rough, you know, uh, I better hold on tight, uh, you know, so uh, <laughs> I knew it was going to be tough regardless, right? Starting your own company in the middle of a pandemic. Um, you know, I think that's a, that's a challenge, but uh, you know, our confidence um, in our ability is, is something that we, um, we were very hopeful for. And, you know, so we went ahead and pulled the trigger and, and moved forward with it. So, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, doubt and uncertainty in there. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's all about the, the internal confidence you have and trying to, yeah. um, you know, service those business partners. Truck drivers as a, really? as a whole have a life expectancy 16 years less than the average population. So when you have that old of a work of a working, uh, you know, group of people, plus a decreased life expectancy. I mean, it, it, you are just waiting for them to fall off, not be able to medically have to retire. Unfortunately, you see people dying of, you know, heart attacks. And, and obviously that's not the majority of people, but you see those in the news. And what I'm trying to do is, hey, how can we, you know, extend a driver's career, show them that the impact of, you know, spending 20 minutes today goes a lot further. And yeah, you might lose a little bit of time today, but the impact that five extra years in your career could have and the hundreds of thousands of dollars you're leaving on the table because your body can't handle the career for as long as you'd want to work. And just also being able to you know, help the economy because I think it's 71% of goods in the United States is transferred by a truck. And if we don't have those drivers to do that, that means that your Wheaties that you ate for the morning and you bought from Walmart, that price is going to go up because it mm -hmm. costs more for the company to get it there. With a lot of my, my business had grown substantially and it was, I was still doing it on the side. And so my hobby became my, my, my full-time job. And then it's uh, the passion took it to the next level and we, we grew and um, through 2008, the Great Recession hit, and anybody who knows anything about housing knows that was probably not a good time to be in housing, but yeah. it was time to remake myself, and I just decided I wanted to be a nationwide modular builder, the first and only one, 
And um, that's where we are today. I'm a licensed registered certified contractor in 42 states. We exclusively use modular construction and uh, we are still the only nationwide modular builder. Nobody else right. is, I'm not laying down the challenge. I'm just saying nobody else has done it yet. <laughs> Early on about um, less than a year into the business, we hired um, a chief heart officer, which is not necessarily um, human resources, but kind of like human resources. We call it, um, instead of human resources, we call it resources for humans. And what her job is, is to keep them um, on their per personal and professional path. You know, if, if a family member is sick or a dog dies, like there's somebody there to lean on, but she's also working with them um, on the job. Like, how can I get better in my role? How can I improve in my role? And for me, she's helping hold everybody else accountable. So we started that about, um, I'll say three years ago, maybe three and a half years ago. And it's been a tremendous part of our success um, because that's something that I don't have time to do every single day. And, she, and she's making sure she's taking care of the people. And um, you know, when, when there are issues that I need to be involved with, I'm, I'm involved. Mm -hmm.